Again, uh, Tim McGuire, President of QP Local 79, representing City of Toronto inside workers and others, uh, the people who deliver services to all of your communities on your behalf. Local 79 makes four recommendations arising out of this report, and then I'll speak to some points uh, about the report and the recommendations. First, City Council should move quickly to explore new and expanded sources of revenue that provide long-term sustainable support for the operating and capital needs of the City, starting with the 2017 budget. Fire sales of profitable assets that support the City's operating budget, like Toronto Hydro, should be opposed. Two, review service level impacts of past and current efficiency measures, including gapping, when exploring future efficiency measures. Three, develop the City's promised quality job assessment tool prior to any consideration of contracting out. Four, explore whether bringing currently contracted out work back in-house can achieve cost savings. So with respect to some areas of the report, uh, the City's uh, long-term financial plan shows that the cupboard is bare. Toronto spending per person has dropped by 7% since 2010, with the exception of rate-based programs like water, yet the City still faces yearly budget gaps of hundreds of millions of dollars and $29 billion in unfunded capital project. The report states, quote, recent patterns of savings and efficiencies are nearing practical limits without service changes or other direction from Council. Council has a choice to make, cut programs or grow revenue. So again, our recommendation is that the City explore new and expanded <coughs> sustainable sources of revenue starting in 2017 budget and again reject any notion of selling profitable assets like Toronto Hydro. Services need to grow to make a more equal City. The public supports services as evidenced by the many service reductions triggered by the core service review in 2012 being rejected due to public outcry. There have been new promises to invest in good jobs, affordable housing, childcare and public transit because the public wants us to tackle growing inequality with services and supports. The City needs to choose a long-term City building vision. The report says we should explore more efficiencies and cost reductions before any revenue tools are implemented, but the report also shows that efficiencies, more efficiencies can't solve the basic fiscal deficit. The report recommends looking at selling assets like Toronto Hydro, but this will actually hurt our long-term financial sustainability. There are too many contradictions. The City Council uh, needs to make a choice. Build a city for everyone or cut, on what, cut back on what we have, but don't pretend there are piles of money sitting under seat cushions in City Hall or elsewhere. This is what some might refer to as a can't suck and blow moment for the City. There are hidden costs to efficiencies of the past six years and other years. In an effort to keep property taxes low, regressive user fees have gone up by 9% over inflation since 2010. Staff vacancies have shot up to 3,000 or almost 6% as city divisions more than double what they were before 2010. Some divisions are near or at 20% gapping. We can't continue these service impacts. So-called efficiency must be measured against impact service levels. Last year's service level reviews repeatedly pointed to a number of challenges and gapping is a chronic problem that's growing. Our recommendation is review service level impacts of past and current measures, including gapping, when exploring any future efficiency means. Exploring contracting out must be balanced with exploring contracting in and maintaining good jobs. Our recommendation again is that the City develop its promised job assessment, quality job assessment tool prior to any consider consideration of contracting out. That quality job assessment tool was developed to look at if the City were contracting out or in work performed by its agencies were actually good, decent jobs and the components of what a good, decent job looks like. And the City needs to be, we've said it many times and we'll continue to say it, needs to be a leader in showing what a good job is. In the past, contracting out has led to very low wage jobs in some areas and in some areas actually sub-minimum wage jobs. And the City can't return to this direction. So the City needs to explore bringing contracting work back in also uh, where cost 
savings can be achieved. I think the city is already reviewing its fleet service contract where parts are provided to the city fleet. Um, but another area where the city should look is engineering services. The city has incrementally contracted out uh, its surveying and design for, for various projects and that should be serious looked at, seriously looked at. There are areas, we believe, where that has led to increased costs rather than the city maintaining its ability to grow a city. And we'll have to leave it at that, uh, Mr. Bar. That's 5.30, and uh, so I thank you very much for your submissions. Are there any questions of this deputy? Thank you very much for being with us today. Appreciate it. Thank you. It.